In this lesson, we're going to learn how to factor quadratic form trinomials in the form ax to the fourth plus bx squared plus c. In a previous lesson, we learned that you could factor quadratic trinomials ax squared plus bx plus c by using an area model, or as I call it, the grid. Today we're going to see that there are certain trinomials that we can also use the grid for. Here's an example, ax to the fourth plus bx to the second plus c. This trinomial can also be factored using the grid. It's important to note that not all trinomials can be factored using the grid. However, if they have this exponent combination, they can be, and it's incredibly useful. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example today, factor the expression completely, 2x to the fourth plus 15x squared minus 50. The first thing I look for is a greatest common factor, but I don't see one. I look at the exponents and I notice that I have that proper exponent combination, x to the fourth plus x to the second plus a constant. I can use the grid. I begin by putting my first term, 2x to the fourth, in the top left hand box. I put my last term, the minus 50, in the bottom right hand box. And then I have to decide what goes in the other two boxes. I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 2 times negative 50, so multiply to negative 100, and add to the middle number of 15. I'll make a list. 1 times negative 100, or negative 1 times 100. 2 times negative 50, or negative 2 times 50. 4 times negative 25, or negative 4 times 25. 5 times negative 20, negative 5 times 20. 10 times negative 10, or negative 10 times 10, which I guess is the same thing. I'm looking for the pair that adds to 15. Which ones are they? Negative 5 and 20. Those are the numbers I'll use in the other two boxes. I'm going to put a plus 20x squared here, and a minus 5x squared there. This is an important note. Notice that the middle term in the trinomial has x squared as its variable and exponent. These two variables in the grid must match that middle term. So since I had a 15x squared, I will put a 20x squared and a minus 5x squared. Now it's business as usual. I look for the greatest common factor across the top. What is the greatest common factor of 2x to the fourth and 20x squared? 2x squared. And now, I use multiplication to fill in the other spots around the grid. 2x squared times something gives me 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times what gives me 2x to the fourth? x squared. The next spot, 2x squared times something is 20x squared. 2x squared times what equals 20x squared? 2x squared times 10, so I'll put a plus 10. Finally, x squared times something will equal negative 5x squared. x squared times what is negative 5x squared? Negative 5. And now I check. 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. I now have my binomials, x squared plus 10 and 2x squared minus 5. I always check to see if I can factor further. Are there any greatest common factors in either of the binomials? No, there is not. Is there a difference of two perfect squares? Not this time. My factored form is x squared plus 10 times 2x squared minus 5. Now let's look at another example. 3x to the fourth plus 16x squared plus 16. Can we factor this using the grid? Well, we look at the exponents and we do have the right setup in this problem, so we can use the grid. First I look for a greatest common factor, see if I have one, and then I work through the grid. If you think you can handle this problem already, now's a great time to pause the video and come back once you've tried it. If you're not feeling confident yet, that's fine, we can go through the problem together. Let's take a look. There is no greatest common factor, so I begin by putting the leading coefficient and the variable, 3x to the fourth, in the upper left hand box, and the last term, plus 16, in the bottom right hand box. I need to figure out what goes in the other two boxes. 3 times 16 is 48. I need numbers that multiply to 48. 
The middle term is 16. I need numbers that add to 16. I make my list of numbers that multiply to 48. 1 times 48, 2 times 24, 3 times 16, 4 times 12, and 6 times 8. I also include the negative counterparts, negative 1 times negative 48, negative 2 and negative 24, negative 3 and negative 16, negative 4 and negative 12, negative 6 and negative 8. I'm looking for the pair that adds to positive 16, 4 and 12. I'll put those into the grid. Now because the middle term of the trinomial has x squared, both of those terms will have x squared, 4x squared and 12x squared. Now I factor the greatest common factor out across the top. The greatest common factor is x squared, and so I pull that out. I then use multiplication to fill in the remaining spots. x squared times something is 3x to the fourth. x squared times 3x squared. x squared times something is 4x squared. x squared times 4. 3x squared times something is 12x squared. 3x squared times 4. And finally I check, I have a 4 times a 4 equals 16. I now have my binomials 3x squared plus 4 times x squared plus 4. As always, I inspect to see if there's any further factoring to do. Is there a greatest common factor in either of the binomials? No, there is not. Is there a difference of perfect squares to look at? No, there is not. There is the factored form of my trinomial. Let's look at another exercise. 2x to the fourth minus 9x squared plus 4. This one is for you to try. Can you factor the expression completely? Please pause the video here, give it a try, and come back when you're ready. Let's see how you did. First we look at the trinomial to see if there's a greatest common factor. There is no greatest common factor. Can I use the grid? I look at the exponents. 2x to the fourth minus 9x to the second plus the constant of 4. Yes, I can use the grid. I begin by filling out the grid with the first term, 2x to the fourth in the upper left hand box, and plus 4 in the bottom right hand box. I need to figure out what goes in the other two boxes. 2 times 4 is 8. I need numbers that multiply to 8. The middle term is negative 9. I need numbers that add to negative 9. Numbers that multiply to 8 are 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. Also, negative 1 times negative 8, and negative 2 times negative 4. Which pair add to negative 9? Negative 1 and negative 8. Because the middle term of the trinomial has x squared, I'm going to use an x squared on each of those when I put them into the grid. It's important to note that if you don't include the x squared, that this process will not work correctly. Now I look across the top. What is the greatest common factor of 2x to the fourth and minus 1x squared? Simply x squared. I now use multiplication to fill in the other positions around the grid. x squared times something is 2x to the fourth. x squared times 2x squared is 2x to the fourth. x squared times something is negative 1x squared. x squared times negative 1 is negative 1x squared. And now, finally, 2x squared times something is minus 8x squared. 2x squared times what? Is negative 8x squared? Minus 4. And now I double check. I have a negative 1 and a negative 4. Multiply those together, and I do get a positive 4. My factors are 2x squared minus 1 and x squared minus 4. I double check my terms to make sure I can't factor further. Are there any greatest common factors? There are not. Is there a difference of two perfect squares? Oh, I do have a difference of two perfect squares. x squared minus 4. We can factor x squared minus 4 into x plus 2 times x minus 2. Bring down the other factor, the 2x squared minus 1, and now I have factored the trinomial completely. Let's do one last example for today. Here's a trinomial, 2x to the fourth minus 14x squared plus 24. Let's see if you can factor this completely. 
Start by looking for a greatest common factor, then see if you can use the grid, and keep your eyes out at the end for common factors or differences of perfect squares. Please pause the video here, take a couple of minutes, and come back when you're ready. Let's see how you did. The first thing I looked for was a greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is 2. That left me with a trinomial x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12. This has the proper form, and so I can use the grid. I put the x to the fourth in the upper left hand box, and the plus 12 in the lower right hand box. Now I have to figure out what goes in the other boxes. 1 times 12 is 12, so I need numbers that multiply to 12. The middle term is negative 7, so I need numbers that add to negative 7. Let's list out the numbers that multiply to 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and the negative counterparts. Which two add to negative 7? Negative 3 and negative 4. I'll put those in the grid. Because the middle term had an x squared attached to it, minus 7x squared, the terms negative 3x squared and minus 4x squared will go into the grid. Now I factor across the top. What is the greatest common factor of x to the fourth and minus 3x squared? Simply x squared. Now I'll use multiplication to fill in the other spots. x squared times something equals x to the fourth. x squared times x squared. x squared times something equals negative 3x squared. x squared times negative 3 equals negative 3x squared. x squared times something equals negative 4x squared. x squared times negative 4 equals negative 4x squared. And now I do my check. I have negative 3 and negative 4. They multiply to 12. That gives me the binomials x squared minus 3, and x squared minus 4. Don't forget the greatest common factor from earlier in the problem. Now I look at each factor. Do I have any greatest common factors in either binomial? No, I do not. Do I have any differences of perfect squares? Yes, I do. x squared minus 4 is a difference of two perfect squares, and that binomial factors to x plus 2 times x minus 2. Bring down the x squared minus 3, and bring down the 2, and now I have factored completely. Now you know everything you need to know in order to factor quadratic form trinomials of the form ax to the fourth plus bx to the second plus c. Remember, you can find more about factoring trinomials in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.